Hey everyone. Uh, so today we are going to be doing uh, steelies. Uh, I'm going to basically show, this video is to basically show how we do steelies. Um, if you know the uh, crevasse along the front, the ridge, um, it bubbles. Um, so we have found a way that we like to do um, to stop that bubbling. Um, even after that, it needs to be uh, sealed so salt and stuff doesn't get in there and start eating away at it. So uh, we will show you how we do it and then we will explain some of the ways that we either do it or we have our customers uh, seal the, the crevasse or crevice, however you guys want to say it. So, okay, I hope you enjoy the video. The best way to powder coat that crevice. Well, to be honest, there is not a best way. That crevice is a pain in the ass. And honestly, there's, everybody does it a little different. Uh, what we do is we take an X-Acto knife. First, we blast it. I'm not going over the basics. We have plenty of videos for the basics. I'm just gonna show you the powder coating of this. There's a couple different ways we do it. And we give the guest or the customers, I'm used to being at work, uh, the customers uh, their choice. Uh, there's some I like better um, and there's some the customers may like better and we'll go over those and then I'll show you uh, the best way I like to do it. Um, so first, we blast them and then we take our, here, let me zoom in a little bit better. Okay, or right, out. Then we take our um, air gun and we go around. I'm not holding it so it's moving, but we push it right in. Different angle, different angles with it. I mean, you get the idea. I'm sorry, I only have me here, so um, there is no one to hold the camera while I do it. So we'll do this for like five minutes uh, per rim, just going around and getting all the loose dirt. And then after that, we grab an X-Acto knife. Uh, we have also used a putty knife. They're the flat, they're really, really thin. They're flat and they're long. We find that that works pretty good. Then we go around it with these, digging out rocks. Um, there's rocks, there's dirt. And unfortunately, I don't care what anybody says, there's no way in hell anybody's getting every speck out of those crevices. Some of it's embedded from years and years of just being on a vehicle and then pounding and getting and pounding, getting pounded. Oh shit, my thing fell off. I guess I kind of can't show you here. Let me put you down a minute. I guess I can't show you how to do this if this ain't even on. Um, so it gets a lot of abuse on the vehicles. So it's embedded tight. Uh, there's nothing that you can do about that. You can try, you can work your way around it over and over and over and over. And when you think you got everything, you didn't. Um, after we go through and do this, we'll take this and dig out every piece that we can find this is painstaking uh but it has to be done like even though we're not getting 100 percent, we have to get as much as we can get so oh nice i lost my blade again so after that part uh we go back around with the air gun like we did the previous step before and we clean it out. Um, at that point, as long as we're physically not seeing anything, as long as we're going around with the air gun and we're not getting belted with anything, it's as clean the best as we can get it. Uh, then the, two, the thing you have to figure out is, how are you gonna seal it? Uh, there is two different ways, actually three different ways. Um, there is heat, do I have it right here? Let me check. 
Oh, nice knocking shit down. There is. Where the hell is my? Oh, right there. Okay, let me turn this around. So there is a heat silicone uh, that we use right there. And we put a bead on the inside, then you powder coat it. When you, if you powder coat these cold, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're gonna get bubbles. You've seen it on other people's shows. You've seen it on our show. Um, so we'll do a nice bead in there uh, and powder coat over it. The only thing I don't like about that is it looks messy underneath the powder coating. Uh, I am not a bead expert. I am not a silicone expert. I'm sure there's some people that can do a nice thin bead and have it look all pretty. Good for them. I can't. So one of the ways is doing it that way. Another way is you powder coat them. You got your bubbles. Uh, you'll see some people pop the bubbles and all that stuff. And then you can put a heat bead of silicone around the outside afterwards uh, using clear. Uh, that's also noticeable. Can't really do much about it. Um, but I think that's one of the better ways because I personally feel, and like I said, I'm personal, my personal feeling, if you put the bead on first, you powder over that, that bead will come off within a year or two years or whatever. Um, it, it does eventually come off. When that comes off, it's gonna take all your powder off and it's bare metal. If you have the bead over the powder, then when a bead comes off, you can just replace it with another bead because there's still powder underneath it, okay? Um, what we suggest instead of silicone, and I had a customer here that works on boats and they use silicone on boats and everything and he doesn't like silicone. He says after a couple of years, he has to replace it, which makes total sense. So he suggested this, I think, well, it's showing me it backwards on your screen, but maybe it's showing it the right way for you guys. So he suggested this. Um, you can get it in Lowell's. What it is, um, it sticks to even wet surfaces where uh, silicone has an issue with that. And he says one of the things that he likes about this on boats and stuff is that it hardens. Uh, silicone, hey, Thor boy. Hey, buddy. Come here, look. You come in to say hi and left. Don't pee on that, you little fucker. Uh, he's pissing on my blast cabinet area. Oh, fucking dogs. Anyways, so with that, it hardens. And he says one of the things is with silicone, he has to remove it a lot. He said with this stuff, it seems to last forever. He, he loves it. He swears by it. Uh, we started having customers use it quite a while ago. And I've had customers with the silicone call me back six months later and say, hey, you know, I need more silicone on it and stuff. In the beginning, I used to do the silicone. Uh, now I won't. Uh, now I just, I prefer to make the customers do it. I know it sounds awful, but that way their expectations are different. If they get it and the silicone's on there, they're just in their head thinking it's gonna last forever. And this is a miracle. Uh, the silicone's a miracle thing. It's not. If they go and do it physically themselves uh, and it starts peeling, they have no problem with putting more silicone on because they know. Uh, and they're also the ones that's making the rims not look perfect. Um, so with this stuff, he swears by it. I started having customers do it maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago. And I have never had somebody call me back. So um, another thing I like about this is that tip where the silicone, you have to cut the tip with these, it has uh, nice little tips. So that's what we suggest on them. So we'll show you how we powder coat them to not do the bubbles. And then we give them to customers. Uh, they can either buy that from us or uh, go to Lowell's or somewhere else and buy it from them. Uh, and then they put it on their rims. And uh, I, have no, had, I have not had any issues. Um, since we're over here with the chemicals, a lot of you guys know with powder, 
um, after using chemicals on them to clean them and everything, they fade. Um, we have this line that we use and we suggest to our customers of using uh, besides just non-detergent soaps. Um, we get this from Chemical Guy. So we use Diablo Gel uh, wheel cleaner. Uh, put a little bit of this in a bucket, wipe your rims with it, and then your rims are clean, okay? Then there's a spray that you can put on. So it's a sealant and it helps your, it protects your rims because of course it's a sealant, okay? So if it's a matte color, we suggest the matte detailer spray, also from Chemical Guy. And then for anything high gloss, uh, VO7 from, again, from Chemical Guy. Um, with those three, you that's all you need to maintain your rims, or actually two of them, because if it's matte, you want the matte. If it's gloss, you want the gloss. That way you don't have to worry about soaps and conditioners and uh, whatever else they have out in the market that says, hey, put it on, leave it on 30 seconds, and if you leave it on longer, it'll fade. So. Uh, sorry for getting sidetracked with that, but that's that part. So what we're doing is we have five steel rims here. Uh, we're going to do them in matte black. We're going to use a Henson black, which is a stronger black than uh, um, prismatic. Um, and then we are going to show you, we hot flock. Anything with steel, like steelies like this with that ridge, we hot flock. We have found... If you do hot flocking and it melts on contact, then you don't have that barrier. When it's cold, it sets a barrier over the ridge, okay? As it starts to melt down in, the air inside bubbles up to the barrier. That's, that's what causes the bubbles. When you hot flock, it instantly melts. So there's no barrier. There's no bubbles coming up. So you just have to hit that crease nice and light, knowing that that's, you're putting a nice little barrier down and then you're gonna be using a sealer to finish it off, or they're gonna use a sealer. Whoever does a sealer is gonna finish it off. So we will start doing this uh, on one of the rims. I will show you us hot flocking uh, that crevice, and you'll see that there's no bubbles. Uh, every once in a while, we may get a surge with the machine uh, for hot flocking. We like to use the KKHD. Um, it's a basic machine from Columbia Coding. We have a lot of issues with surgeon. Um, whenever we get into any complicated ones, we use the X1 Reaper. Uh, it's a high colo. Uh, that is right. So that's the high colo. Um, we use that one. Um, the reason I don't use it on the littler stuff is because the cleaning process. Uh, you got hoses and stuff. It's a little bit longer to do, um, but it's well worth it when you're into complex uh, jobs. Um, but for the nice basic one coders, uh, the KKHD is fine. And it's funny because this little system of the KKHD right up, let me see, right there, that little box costs the same price is this whole thing. And the little box, I've done three coats and struggle with four, the KKHD or the Reaper. I've done five and I mean, I didn't even try number six. I've got at least five um, with ease. But on that one, you also can control the, the KB. You can also control the microamps where the HD, uh, you can't. They say you can. You have to set everything before. Uh, you can't set it as you're going along and see all your numbers and everything. It, if you have any questions on that, just ask. A few people have and I explained it and they went the other way. So um, I feel it's a misleading by, high, uh, by uh, Columbia Codens to say that that's adjustable because it's really not. Anyways, guys, um, let's start powdering. Okay, guys. So if you go too much powder, you're gonna get a block uh, and you'll get drips. So aim away, do your initial pull. Make sure you're not getting a burst, we're not. I'm gonna go on the outside, get my lip. This way I know I'm controlling my powder and I know what I'm 
need. And to me, that's too much still. And that's why we kind of do the outside look first. Okay, this is good. See how it's barely anything? That's what you want to do in the corner or along that edge so that you don't get too much powder in there because if you get too much powder, you're screwed. I need a little hair more powder because the wind is blowing. You get too much powder in there, it's going to run and you're also going to get bubbles. So you literally have to get just enough powder to cover, but nothing else. So I'm doing my outside, I'm letting it run down a little bit because as it runs out, it loses its power in here. So I'm very high right now, it feels. So now, since I got my outside, I'm gonna just do my inside, get that taken care of. I'm here in crackling, which I don't like, so I'm gonna turn down my KV a little bit. But I do not want any kind of crackling because otherwise it was showing my clear and I don't want it to show my clear. Okay, so now, I'm looking around the edge. It's kind of building up, but not enough to cover. Because remember, this edge, you're still gonna have, right in that crease, a white mark. Um, you're gonna get it as best as you can, but if you get this way in there, then you're gonna bubble. And that's the whole reason in hot blocking, so you're not bubbling. So I'm just pushing powder slowly in there, hoping not to build up too, too much because we don't want to build up too much. There. And then after this, I'll show you a way, even if you do, because you are going close here, trying to get inside. And I can see, now that I got black, I can see little pieces of rock up in there and that's fine. Like I said, there's no way in hell, and I don't care who says it, there's, they're able to get everything out of that crevice. Um, I will show you, usually we start on the back and go to the front, but for this, since it's hot flocking, I'm going to do the front back, and then I'll just do a uh, overlay in the front so I don't have to deal with it. So I'm back here. I'm going to get my hardest parts first. Okay, I'm gonna turn it up a little bit because I did turn it down. Let me just make sure. Okay, we have this seal right along the back. We have this gap that we have to get. So I'm gonna go a little close and I can hear the snap, the crackling. And as you know, that's gonna do fish eyes unless you do your clear coat a certain way and I'll show you how to do the clear coat to where you don't have to worry about your fish eyes. Uh, I know I, I've seen some people do it but not too many. Everybody's usually a foot away from their uh, thing that they're blasting. This is a KK HD that I'm using. Uh, it's definitely not my favorite gun to use, but it does fine for little jobs like this. I'm just always having to do this and shake the fuck out of it and it's annoying as hell. Okay, let's see, I'm not missing. Anything. Nope. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the front just for framing because of course we got the circles. I can see that right there we had a little bit of this built up and all that will do is bubble. And of course, you know, we don't, the whole reason in hot flocking is so you're not getting your bubbles. But there's really nothing we can do because we need to get some down there. And then the top, really. Some people do the centers. I do them. Some people don't. Uh, the reason I do them is just looks. It doesn't take much powder to do. So 
a customer feels if you don't do the center, it's unfinished, even though the tire goes there and it doesn't make a bit of difference. Um, so it's a visual thing for the customer. So keep that in mind. Customer perception is what keeps your business going. I know it's tedious with a little bit of spray. Some people have it a lot, but when you're hot walking, trust me, you do not want a big spray because if you fuck up, you have to redo the whole thing. I actually have a video where I fucked up hot walking. I'll put it, um, I don't know if you guys can see me. I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, I screwed up on hot walking once and watch the video. Uh, that will show when this machine spurts, what can happen. Okay, now we're just gonna do a, I can see that's gonna bubble up there and I guarantee it, but that's fine. Like I said, we're gonna go over it anyways. I'm just doing this to try to not have the whole seam a big bubble. Okay. Hope you enjoyed. Hey guys. So we were talking about earlier. Um, when you get close, you hear that crackling. Um, that crackling is basically your uh, KB. It is probably up too high or your microamps is up too high. Um, it's gonna be back ionization. I'll put a video I just did on back ionization with KB and microamps up here somewhere. Um, so when that happens on your coat, um, it'll create this thing that we call, uh, some call it uh, fish eyes, spider webs, whatever. Um, it really shows when you do your clear coat. When you do your clear coat in your white, you'll see the spiders or the fish eyes. Uh, you have to blow it all off. You have to put it in, you have to heat it up. Heat usually gets it out um, for us. Uh, we'll put it in the oven, we'll bring it back out. Um, if we start doing it and we have it again, we'll take the uh, map gas torch and we'll heat it up uh, more. Um, and then it takes it out. Um, it's just holding a charge right there. So as you're getting close to the inside, you heard all the crackling. So there's a, gonna be a lot of fish eyes. Uh, the one way I found um, instead of going through the hassle of multiple times in the oven, mat gas or any of that, um, to take care of the fish eyes is what I'm gonna do now. Um, I have my KV up, um, so it sticks. Um, I turn the feed up on this machine, uh, the air, uh, and we give it a big cloud from a distance, um, so it will stick. If we put it too close like you normally would, um, the charge will do fish eyes. Uh, so we just keep it back to where there's not going to be that charge by the time it gets to that part. Um, it's not as intense. Um, you do go through a little bit more clear coat, but to me, a little bit of clear coat I go through compared to the hassle I usually go through uh, is well worth it. So I have my stuff up. I have my KV up. I have my part here and I'll show you. Um, the wind is blowing uh, through my garage door, so it will push some. Um, but normally when you go dead on with it, it's fine. So uh, this is what we do. Usually you're like here, close, um, which about that close to it. Uh, we're going to be more or less about that close. We're just going to be dead on with it. We're just gonna let it settle. This also, when you're doing clear coat, you'll notice sometimes you'll get those little white chunks. Um, this also, let, when the chunks come out, they drop before your part. Um, so it, it works good. Okay. I already prepped this because I already did a rim over here. When I first started, it was lightly getting it. Turn your KV up. 
Um, that way it gives it enough charge for the distance, okay? So it gets it good. Um, we're even in the crevices, so even if the black didn't quite get right in there, the white, the clear is in there. So it is uh, sealed in there. Start with the top, back. I just did this backwards because I was talking and I wasn't thinking. Uh, clear coat, color coat and clear coat, you always do the back first, then the front because of the framing. Uh, so if you go backwards like I am, sorry. If you go backwards like I am, you're gonna have to go over the front again to get the framing out. A lot of my videos, I explain framing. Maybe I'll do a what is framing uh, video. Um, yeah, that might be the next what is, so. Okay, guys. Start at the top because you're going to get some that falls. On the side, doesn't really matter. You can get your normal closeness. You don't waste all your clear by distance on the sides because it really doesn't matter if it. Uh, fish eyes. Okay, we're gonna make sure the framing is done. And then I'm gonna lightly blow it. I always lightly blow it just to get the excess. You don't really need to get the excess because it is clear um, and it won't run with this little bit, but. Hey guys, so that is the best way that I have found. Again, um, I say this in a lot of my videos, um, everybody does things differently. I will do things differently than the next guy that does it and the next guy and the next guy. Um, we all have our little ways that works best for us. This way works best for me. It may not work best for you. Um, so to go quickly through the steps again, um, of course, you blast it, you do all that good shit first. Uh, um, we take a narrow exacto uh, knife to get in a crevice, and we take our uh, air gun and blow it uh, to get all the garbage out. And if you try to get every single spec, good luck. You're going to be there for days. Um, it is really hard. So we go through that. Uh, then we hot flock. Uh, we usually have the part around... 400 uh that way by the time we're done the front we do the back and then come to the front again it's still hot enough to hot flock because we do not want that cold on there um we do the front first you always try to do the front first or second on any rims you always want to do the back because the framing but hot flocking i do the front first turn around do the back because the front is the main part with the hardest part uh, and you always do the hardest part first okay um so Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll let you see how it looks when we're done. And uh, keep an eye out. We do have some videos coming up soon. Um, I have an old chair over there, not a chair. Uh, we don't even know what the hell it is. I'll just show you. Um, I didn't record blasting it. Um, if anybody knows what the hell this is, please put it in the comments. Even the gentleman we're powdering it for doesn't know what it is. He likes it, so he has it as lawn art. Um, but it looks like it has these steps that move. Um, this looks like it hooks to something here. I'm sorry, this is the way it actually is. That's what it is, so has a seat and you look like feet stirrups that's hooked to it and this hooks to something this is the bottom if anybody knows what that is uh please uh let me know um because i asked him because i was curious and he wasn't sure he just liked it and wanted his lawn art um i may just record us powder coating it we did blast it already hopefully i took a couple pictures before it was blasted but i don't know if i did because We've been uh, super busy. Um, so, okay guys, uh, let me get these and I'll show you how it turns out and I'll see you on the next video.